Hey guys, in the never-ending quest to find a good place to vlog, I have settled temporarily on this blank white wall and the absence of a tripod. Um, someday maybe I'll get one. Today I want to talk about um, sort of my planner history and why I think it was such a great thing that I found the Bujo when I did. So the title of the video is actually wrong. The Bujo was not really my first planner. I like everybody, I think, had a school planner growing up. Um, I was homeschooled, actually, and so my mom got us school planners, and she would put in all the different assignments we had to do, and we would highlight them when we were done. Um, we'd highlight them so that you could still see what they said, and they were quick and easy to see that they were done. Um, and so that's what we would do. And um, so I got used to, like, using a planner as the, you know, tell me what I need to do today thing and crossing things off was like the rewards you get for doing the thing. And so I'm not sure if it's because of that or if it was something innate in me that just loves a to-do list. Um, and so here we are now. Obviously, I love to-do lists. That's why I make a planner channel. Um, so that was just like a week on two pages, the pretty standard school planner format. Um, and so you know, I, I used that. But then, like, I, I had one in college, and then I graduated, and it didn't really occur to me that a planner could be something that wasn't related to your school projects and homework and due dates. Um, so I didn't have one for a chunk of time. I think for a year in there, I got my hands on a really tiny little um, cheap, you know, little planner calendar. I think it came from, like, the Dollar Bennett Michaels. Um, it fell into my lap. And I um, just, I had it, so I started writing stuff in it, and it became indispensable. There was another year where I uh, really felt like I needed a school planner for my Hogwarts. Um, and so I actually made one, like, from scratch using some of the, you know, the binding machine at work. And I was, like, trying to put everything together in a way that made sense to me as, like, a student, because that was where I was coming from as far as my planning, and I, that's what I needed for my Hogwarts and the classes there. Um, and then that kind of started to become my actual plan. I like I started putting other things in there too, so that was fun. And then um, in 2015, I got engaged, and planning a wedding takes a lot. Um, and so for that, I still I didn't have a planner. I was starting to sort of use Google Calendar occasionally, I honestly can't even tell you where I would put to-do list items. I must have used post-it notes or something, um, but I definitely didn't have my stuff together the way I do now. Back to that. But um, So when I was planning my wedding, what I ended up with was like a legal pad, but the little one, um, in like a cover for that, which had room for um, stuff in the front, like a pocket for stuff in the front, a little pocket for business cards, which is useful with all the vendors and stuff. You get a lot of business cards. And so what I had in there, and I wish I could show it to you, but I tend to be the kind of person who throws stuff away, and so I threw away the pages as I didn't need them anymore. But in the front, I had a, um, a page for every month, because I would go to these different, you know, the knot or whatever, and they're like, five months out, you should be doing this. Four months out, you should be doing this. And so I, um, I had every month and all of the things that it said I should be doing on each month. And then... After those pages were done, I had the like each month split up by weeks, and so I would have a task list for that week. You know, call so and so, book this and that. You know, make these different things, and I would cross everything out as they were done. Um, and then I actually threw those pages away. I had different pages that I was using for taking notes for different things. You know, as I'm going to a meeting, and I was basically I was bullet journaling, but I was doing it in this flip notepad. Um, and then throwing stuff away so that I didn't have access to it anymore. And then two years later, my sister gets engaged. She asks me about, you know, our budget and about, you know, how we were picking vendors and all this stuff. And I had lost a lot of that data because I threw it away. Regrets. I wish I could show you because basically what I was doing is I was taking the bullet journal system before I even knew it was a thing. And I was using it to plan my wedding. Um, and it was really, <laughs> really useful. Um, I learned about bullet journaling. So I got married in May 2016. I learned about bullet journaling like exactly a month later, mid-June. Um, I pulled out a notebook that I had lying around to try it out. 
Um, and for the last week of June, or maybe last couple of weeks of June, I tried it out just with a boring old line notebook that I had lying around. If you don't have a bullet journal and you want to start, that's the best way, I think, to get a, just like find a journal you don't care about. One that's already lying around the house that you have to use. You know, just take the, the last half of it and say, all right, this is where I'm starting. Just so that you can get a hang of like what you like and how it works for you. Um, so that's what I did. And then a couple weeks in, I decided I loved it. And so I purchased a moleskin, as you do. Um, this one's dot grid, which was fine. I don't use dot grid anymore. I don't know why. I just prefer a regular grid now. Um, so I got this, the moleskin that everybody had. I never got a Leuchtturm. Because, I don't know, I feel like I was too good for that or something. Or it was too good for me, or both. Anyway, the Bound Bullet Journal lasted me um, through the end of that year. There was still room, but then I moved on to, tra to Traveler's Notebooks. But, so, like, it was because of the Bullet Journal that I got into planning for the last couple of years, culminating in, like, here I am now. Hi! Um, and, you know, spending money on Filofaxes and stuff doing all of this, like planning as a really intentional practice instead of just something that kind of is a place where you put uh, stuff on your calendar um, or, you know, maybe scratch a to-do list here and there. Like I actually s schedule time to sit down with my planner and, you know, figure out my week and I feel like I'm a lot more productive. Um, I am that person now because I found the bullet journal and because it resonated with me because I was already kind of doing that. And, um, you know, it, it made sense to me. And I think, back to the topic of the video, I think a bullet journal is a really great first planner. And here is why. Basically, you get to figure out what it is that you like and what you need without having to invest in something, right? So it's so simple and easy to learn. You just watch the original video. It's like three minutes long. Um, there's like, what, four or five different components to the really basic bare bones system. And then there's infinite places you can go from there. So if what you need is habit tracking or if what you need is project pages, then you just turn the page and it's there. Um, and so if you're like trying to get started with a planner and you buy into a whole system that promises to sell you productivity, whether it's, you know, your $100 Aaron Condren's or your you know, Franklin Covey's, or honestly, I don't even know, because I've been using a variation of the bullet journal ever since. But I'm glad that I am, and that I didn't invest in something that was going to try to sell me on a whole system that I would then have to learn and mold myself into that system instead of molding the system around me, right? And you really quickly realize when you're bullet journaling that what you need today is not necessarily what you're going to need tomorrow. Like, in my current setup that I'm working on, kind of, you know, tweaking things for the new month and the new year, I'm moving my weeklies and my dailies separately um, because I feel like I like to have a weekly task list. But not every single day has to have a daily page. Sometimes I like to have a one-day-per-page daily. Other days I really don't. Um, and it's that kind of flexibility that you get with a bullet journal that you can just decide okay, I don't need a daily, and then you're not wasting paper, or you're not feeling like you're wasting paper that you invested in if there's already a, a set, you know, space for your for your week or your day. Um, and you can just, you know, restructure things. Maybe you want a timed daily for, you know, Wednesdays, and you want just a to-do list box for Thursdays, and then Fridays you're running errands, and so you need something detachable for your grocery list. Like, there's so many different things that you might not even consider that that's possible. You might think that you need multiple different systems for multiple different things if you have like a pre-printed planner with not a lot of flexibility. And so the ability to change up what you're doing and get creative, make up your own kinds of spreads based on your specific needs, it gets you, you know, thinking about planning as a process it gets you reflecting on whether what you're doing is being productive or whether what you're doing is just floating or whether what you're doing is, you know, spending more time on planning than on doing, which we've all fallen into, I think. But it, it kind of, it keeps you grounded in, like, what planning is, but it keeps you also thoughtful about what planning could be. 
I might not be making sense, but bullet journaling for me got me into planning, which has made me a more productive person and just better at life. Also, bullet journaling is like super cheap. Uh, like I said, I started with just a notebook I had lying around. You can do something with a 99 cent ring bound, you know, notebook that you find at the Dollar Tree, or you can use a notebook you already have, or you can invest, you know, $100 in a fancy ring planner or whatever you want to do. Um, like everyone, uh, okay, not everyone, a lot of people will look at, you know, Google bullet journal, they'll see what they see on Instagram and on Pinterest, and they'll go, oh my goodness, what supplies do I need before I get started? And the answer is literally a pen and a piece of paper. Like, just to get started, you don't even need anything. And so that makes it so accessible, and you can figure out exactly what you like before you decide that you want to invest in something that's like, you know, prettier or fancier or maybe holds up better to the kind of ink that you've decided you like to use. Um, but it lets you, you know, have the experience of planning free from the investment and even the decision making that goes into figuring out what it is you need. I love how customizable it is. Everything that you want. I mean, I think I'm kind of sounding redundant here. But you can decorate one day if you want to, and I think that's helpful for a lot of people. I sometimes find it to be nice. Helps me keep it open on my desk and like looking at it. Um, or you can just be super bare bones. You can, like, no pre-printed pre -printed planner would have a when to wash your bra tracker. But that was something that I found super useful before I started nursing um, and needed to just wash my bra all the time anyway. Just like that kind of customizability, you're not going to find it anywhere else. I don't think I could ever go back to using just a pre-printed week per page layout um, because just what I've built around the Bujo system has just become so indispensable and useful to me. So if you're trying to figure out what kind of planner you want to use as sort of a first planner for your foray into planning as either a hobby or a productivity tool, I would suggest starting with the really basic Bujo system, um, sort of like I did way back in August 2017 when I did the Minimalist Bujo Challenge. You can find that on my channel. Um, I would suggest doing it really basic, like a pen and a notebook, and then figure out what you need because what you need might actually be different from week to week, and the Bujo is going to allow you to figure that out and to find a system that works for you. So that is everything. Probably the longest video I've filmed in a while, so you're welcome, internet. I will see you in the next one. Bye.